call me with this. I feel so maybe we should be coming together in I was speaking to An Andy Wilson at the East End of Docks in Greenock and Andy's going to fill us in just in a general idea of what's happening with this space in terms of the common good. Well, at this point in time it's, it's now owned by Riverside Inverclyde. Uh, but going back to the start of it, uh, it was bought by the people of Greenock from the Shaw Stewarts way back in 1772. Uh, it's been through various stages of development and control throughout the years, but it was never, in, at any time, it's never left the hands of the, the people of Greenock. It was always owned by the council. Uh, it, it's owned in their name and our behalf, so it's determined as common good, uh, and that was ratified by the Court of Session in 2003. So the, what is it they're actually doing? Is the council parceling it off, selling it off to people? Well, the council actually bought it back from Scottish Enterprise. So in effect, they paid £98,000 for East India Harbour, uh, with certain franchises and deals done. So they've actually paid £98,000 for their own ground. Now they brought it back again? Aye, but it's under the auspices of Inverclyde Council as a corporate body under the 1995 Act. So it's not really common good anymore. There's been a plug put in because of the 1995 Act that they don't have to class it as common good because they're a corporate body and they've purchased it. Oh, the council is this? The council, yes. So how did the, uh, I mean, what is the problem with it? The, is the, the money, the finances, what's happening to the finances? Are they using it for the social inclusion or where's the profits going? For no, this? it just, it just goes into a general poogie. It's just into a general fund. It's not classed as common good. So what should have happened to it? Every penny that was generated here should have went back into the Common Good Fund, which Inverclyde Council claims not to have very much of. Uh, in the, the current accounts, it stands at somewhere half a million pounds for all of the Common Good assets in Greenock, including the town buildings. Half a million pounds? Yes. That's peanuts, really, isn't it? Probably... Well, the, the hardware behind this here, they've just, six or seven years ago, the get European grant money and spent six and a half million pound refurbishing it. So where the Can you actually get a common good list? I mean is there a list that you can get off the council that well, tells you what the common good is? I've approached them recently and I've asked for that information and what came back was a, a list of properties that are in what the council calls their property for portfolio. But there's no mention of common good, uh, and that's that portfolio in, includes Greenock, Port Glasgow, and Gourock, as well as Inverkip and Kilmacombe, which is determined to be Inverclyde. So, so that is the half a million pounds is the total sum for all of these boroughs. So how did you get involved in all this knowledge about common good? It was oh, a long time ago. There was an interdict placed on me and nine other people uh, to stop us from using the harbour. Uh, and that was something that shut us up because we questioned what was happening at the time. So it, it was a silencing tactic. They, they threatened us with damages of £20,000 that we were holding up at work and all that kind of stuff. So That's when the development was starting? Yeah. The, where we stand now used to be transit sheds for the docks. Uh, and they were in the process of demolishing that, but they didn't get through their proper processes, and we challenged them on that. And the next thing we knew, we were having an interdict at High Court. Uh, that situation remained in place for nine years, and then they said, oops, sorry, we've made a mistake. See ye. Now they're seeing us. Uh, we've taken it back to court to establish what the status of it was. 
Uh, we were always under the impression that it was a separate trust, uh, not having known anything about Common Good at that point. So went to the court of session and asked them to declare that the property was uh, part of a trust. The council's defence to that action was that it wasn't a separate trust, it was part of the common good. That was the first we had heard of common good. Uh, that being the case, the, the court agreed with them, yes, it's not a separate trust, and throughout 16, 17 pages of rational decision, uh, looking at the history of thing, the, the court determined, yes, it was common good and not a separate trust. That was a decision came out in 2002. We then approached the council to find out what the position was and what they were prepared to do about it because their defence has been upheld and they were, in a sense, trustees uh, because the common good is a quasi-trust in effect. So their responsibilities as trustees were to look after the asset on our behalf. Uh, to this date, nothing. It takes them 10 months to answer a letter. But that's, that's most people's idea of the thing, you know, the common good. Mm -hmm. It's putting trust with the council to look after. Yeah. And I mean, even here, when you look about, what have you got, supermarkets? Yeah. There more supermarkets? Well, a, a piece, they split into two sections. There's title rent three. 43834, which is a harbour land behind us. This is the boundary line. And 42086, which is to the west. A portion of that, we've now got a big swimming pool on, a leisure centre. The council bought that ground back from Scottish Enterprise in order to build the leisure centre. So they've used public funds to buy back public land. Mm. In a similar situation with the East India Harbour behind us, uh, it was valued by the district valuer at £300,000. The ultimate end of the situation was Inverclyde Council bought back their own harbour for £98,000. But they only bought back the three walls. They didn't buy the water part. Mm. Strange, because throughout the sales of this, uh, it was first sold by Clydeport who believed they owned it because they were successors to the Greenwood Harbour Trust. But the Greenwood Harbour Trust never owned it either. They were only administrators and managers. Uh, and there's a clear history of that progression through the history of it, the, the whole area where uh, the Harbour Trust never owned any of it. Anything built in this area prior to 1866 was, used by, was built using town funds. Therefore, it belonged to the town. So Harbour Trust didn't own anything, they managed and administered. Clydeport succeeded them and the town was busy, everybody was working, so nobody was really interested and they didn't really know anyway because nobody told them this. So is there other people, there's you and Ken, uh, I mean, is it, how, how do people get about dealing with this stuff? Is there much? They don't deal about it, there's no publicity. Some years ago... I mean, how, how would you... How would you Put more public, uh, more public interest in the thing. I mean, pe people kind of when you explain what the common good is, mm -hmm. they kind of get it quite quickly. But this common good thing, just goes, what, what does that mean? And how do you think we should get some kind of public awareness? Obviously, get that into a public eye. But we attempted when the, when the court case was going on. Uh, the BBC came down and did an interview in the river on a boat, uh, and it was supposed to go on one of the, these public awareness programmes. Uh, two days before it was due to be broadcast, it got binned for whatever reason we don't know. We did interviews with the Herald, and they were, their publication date was a Tuesday. Uh, it didn't happen, and when we questioned that, we were told that somebody from Scottish Enterprise had approached them and asked the question, see that big uh, advertising budget we have with you? Do you want to keep it next year? Mm. So. It's big boy, wee boy. And we're a big boy, so we can't do wrong. And uh, there's certainly, I couldn't say conspiracy, but there's certainly been collusion here. Well, I don't think it's a conspiracy, it's just straightforward business. They're just doing it, you get off with doing it. Uh, but piracy is illegal. 
Aye, but I'm saying it's just public awareness. People just think yeah, it's nothing to do with me. Yeah. But if they were aware of how much money was involved mm -hmm. and the potential for that money, particularly places like Greenock, you know what I mean? I think you know we need to get them interested that way. Um, well, that's just the, the problem, getting it into the public eye, because at the end of the day, everybody's making a buck down here, except the people who really own it. Yeah. The Scottish Enterprise, Clydeport, Clydeport sold this harbour behind us and didn't own it. They're now coming back in to get a second bite at the cherry. I think Clyde in partnership Port's with other Clyde bodies. Clydeport's idea is going for Glasgow and just coming as far as it can go. Well, what have they done in Glasgow? How much common good land did they steal in Glasgow as well? <laughs> or is that a question we shouldn't ask? I'm not really concerned with Glasgow. Glasgow's got its own problems. I'm concerned with uh, this area. Well, it is a kind of national problem, really. Of course Everybody's it is, but it's, 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 it's down to ignorance. Uh, the public don't know about it, so... And their attitude is, it's nothing to do with me, so that's, that's wrong. But trying to get it into the public eye is the hard part, because the papers aren't interested, or they've got ulterior motives, and alternative motives, keeping their budgets good and all that kind of stuff, and playing with big boys. Where can you go from there? Not really, no, but I know, for instance, that Lidl, I've got a store on its site, and they've got a 125-year lease at £1 a year, if requested. Now, that lease is with Scottish Enterprise, and in my view, that lease was only... I mean, it's a registrable lease, as far as the land register's concerned, and that lease was only given out to put somebody in the middle and protect the keeper's position, because the keeper's job is to protect the proprietor in possession. Uh, you know, one pound a year, that's ridiculous. Scandalous. Aye, exactly. Uh, how, how is it that Scottish Enterprise, rather than the town council, are Well, they purchased the... They purchased the harbour site from Lamont's, who in turn had purchased it from Clydepoor. That's 43834. 42086, they purchased directly from Clydepoor because of, we've got big plans and we're going to do this and we're going to do that. And it turns out that Clydeport's in partnership with Scottish Enterprise and various other people. So all the cats are in the same bag and they're uh, scratching everybody except themselves. They're benefiting, but Scottish Enterprise is, as far as I'm concerned, their, uh, their remit's not to do this. I mean, they find a, come in and use public money or grant money or whatever, refurbish and regenerate and get out. Now, they've gotten out as far as the harbour's concerned by selling the ground back to Inverclyde Council. But it's a crazy situation and it shouldn't be there. That was their defence in the court of session. My understanding is that there has to be a court, like a, a judge has to approve any sale of land or any change of use of land that's common good. Well, more so in this case because when it was originally sold by the Shaw Stewarts to the town in 1772, there was a, a clause put into, there was an agreement, uh, a few contract and then a, a final sale. And the condition was in these three documents that the land could not be sold, alienated, or disposed forevermore. Uh, and I mean, Shaw Stewart went as far as writing to his relatives in Jamaica and said, "Look, I'm doing this deal. Don't come back in 50 years of when I'm dead and try and claim it back. Your tea's out now. It's finished. It's a done deal." So that statement and that prohibition was upheld in 1866 when the, the Harbour, Tr you know, Harbour Trust came into being. Uh, that was carried through in Section 89 of the Act. There was a saving of that clause. It was again saved in 1913 when they changed the Harbour Constitution again uh, under Section 212 of the 1913 Act. And in 1965, when the Clydeport Authority Act came into being, uh, 
section 131 states that the authority should act as if they were trustees on any land that they're taking over. So section 212 wasn't repealed in the 65 Act, so the prohibition carries through all the way up to 1965. And what can you do about that? The facts are there before them, but they're just turning a blind eye. When it's brought to their attention... Yeah, Stonewall's... Uh, yeah, kind of aye. Uh, and the, the council's attitude, just ignore it, it'll go away. Yeah, it might answer the questions. Well, as I say, I, I wrote to the chief executive, Mr Mandel, uh, who's the president chief executive, I wrote to him when he came into the office and requested certain information. I got an answer ten months later on the penultimate day of... Uh, the expiry of a prescription period. And the letter said, basically it said, you're too late, prescriptions run away with you. But if you get back and look at the, the Prescription Act, there's a Schedule 3 in the Act which states that certain things are imprescriptible, one of them being a real right in land. And because of the terms of the purchase of this property by the people of Greenock, they established a real right. And that real right didn't change for 200 years. Mm. All of a sudden, the SD and Scottish Enterprise come along and, oh, we'll change the rules here. Can it happen? They're ignoring court stuff. I mean, the, the judges in the, the court of session, three high court judges, criticised their, uh, their attitude and stated that, that they may wish to consider how the property left the hands of their predecessors. To me, that was a soft option. Uh, it was a kind of, look, we know what's going on here, but don't force us to take action on it. Try and do it yourself. They've done nothing. They've totally ignored it. And that's the situation we're at just now. I've taken it back to court again to ask them, ask the court to make them implement their duties uh, unfortunately, I went the wrong way about it and applied for the wrong, went through a wrong court process. Uh, I'm now at the stage where it may have to go back to court to declare that Clydeport had no right to sell it in the first place. And it, everything stops. If they had no right to sell, the next guy doesn't own it, so he's no right to sell it. You know, if you steal my car, you can't, it's no yours to sell. Mm -hmm. And the next guy doesn't achieve ownership and that's what's happening here they're, they're selling everything the this site behind is a harbour site the council has now sold it to riverside inverclyde for one pound they paid ninety eight thousand pounds for it but there's a partnership deal going where they might get something back but at the end of the day ren 43834 has now been split down to there's 13 titles mentioned in it 13 REN numbers, uh, that's land registration numbers. So they've split it down to 13, with no reference at all to REN 43834, which is a mother title. So they've put wedges in the middle that the, the keeper is duty bound to attempt to defend because he's registered these titles. It's part of his duty to defend the proprietor and possession. But he's not, he's not been given a full information either. Mm. I mean, the instance was when Scottish Enterprise bought 42086, the keeper questioned uh, the papers that were put in front of him as evidence of ownership, especially the Custom House. Uh, because they had complained that Clydeport had sold the Greenock Custom House and this land we're standing on to Scottish Enterprise. Eventually, uh, somebody was po forced to pay the customs and excise £5,000 for that, for this square in front of us, uh, because they didn't own it. So how much time do you spend digging up all this information? Too much. What, does it, what, do you, what drives you? Uh, what makes you want to do it? People have said to me I'm like a dug with a bus ball. Well, I'm afraid that's the way it goes. Uh, I'm a stand-up guy. If, but it does seem if I'm wrong, I'll put my hands up. Yeah. 
It does seem to be the whole issue is in the hands of such few people. I mean, at least kind of spread out a bit. With, uh, well, hopefully this will achieve that. But I think creating awareness of this, what the term common good means, mm -hmm. would help things along the way. Well, it's, at the end of the day, it's yours. And why should somebody else well, profit from we it? We should call it that. At the end of the day, it's yours. Why? It's yours or something. That's not it is. Aye, but it's not going back to the proper place. Would, if, if that money was going back to the common good funds, what sort of things are it doing today that could benefit from that? I don't really know. I'm not involved in uh, po uh, politics or these kind of things or where it goes, but uh, as far as I'm aware, there, there is other places where uh, they've got common good funds and there's a process where worthy causes or worthy people can apply uh, in certain ways to to get benefit from it. I mean, in this area, they're closing down care facilities and uh, educational facilities because they've got no money. The money's there if they want to go and look for it. They've not even got to go and look for it. They've only got to ask for it. If they go and ask a court, we've claimed this is common good. You say it's common good. How do we go about getting it back? And if they challenge the keeper, uh, I'm quite sure he would be receptive because when we went to court with the keeper, the, the, they walked out the door on a technicality, and the technicality was that we, as pursuers, had no title to sue. And the case was binned because it's not ours. In effect, it is ours, but it's not registered in our name. The, the true custodians of the council, and they weren't trying to chase it. So. As far as the, the land court, uh, the lands court's concerned, Inverclyde Council are the only people who can challenge this, and they're not prepared to do that. The reasons for that, I've got no idea. Probably because uh, past administrations have messed it up, and somebody's going to get egg in their face. But I mean, at the end of the day, this is not a, a heat hunting exercise. Exercise. This is to get a proper perspective on it and get the land back into the hands of the people. That's all we're trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. And vindicate our own position because been taken to court for nine years on interdicts and it's a lot of press and a lot of hassle. And if you're not wrong, it shouldn't have happened. So somebody needs to get it sorted out very quickly because uh, I'm getting tired. Well, that's one of the things you could be using the common good fund for. Oh, I want my court case, my court costs aye, back again, aye, aye. aye. aye exactly. In 15 years out of my life. I mean, you should fund the dissent. I mean, people... Should, well, at the, end of the day, I'm at the end of the day, I'm fighting a corner that the council should be fighting. Mm -hmm. Why should I have to do that? The, uh, in some parts of Scotland, the community councils have taken on the kind of campaigns on the common good. Have the community council been doing it? Well, there, there's, there's various, there's about six or seven community councils, but we've not, we approached them initially way back 12, 14 years ago, and the attitude was, I've not got a boat, and people seem to think this, this is about harbours. I mean, we were, the nickname we got was, oh, here boat people again. It's nothing to do with me. You know, I, you know, I've got, I'm not going to get any benefit out of it. But as I say, we didn't know anything about common good at that time, mm -hmm. so we couldn't explain the benefits that could be achieved by establishing this as common good. So maybe if we told them now, they would uh, take a wee bit more notice. But as it stands at that time, they weren't interested, in, and we didn't pursue it because we just took up a fight ourselves and tried every avenue we could see, being going to a Lance Tribunal, going to a court of session, the Sheriff Court to force them to try and do their job. Uh, but the fight will go on.